Hello. I recently received a DM on Discord asking how to connect a fabric mod to a Spigot plugin. In my attempt to explain this, I ended up writing a 1400 character long essay about it and realized it would be much easier to make a video about this. First of all, what do I mean by connecting fabric mods and Spigot plugins? Most server-side plugins are made using the Spigot API. This allows for easy development of server-side modifications. Spigot is perfect for most projects, however, there are some limitations. Spigot can only change things in the server. Anything client-side cannot be changed. For most projects, this, again, isn't an issue, but for my type of work, SMP plugins, it can be limiting at times. There are some things that only a client can do, such as custom GUIs, keybinds, physics changes, and so on. That is where Fabric comes in. Fabric is the preferred API for most modern mods, including my own. It allows for the client-side functionality that Spigot lacks. There is a problem, though. Spigot and Fabric are two entirely different APIs, and they are not compatible. There is a solution to this, however. Chat messages and commands. I know this sounds ridiculous, but hear me out. By using chat messages, we can implement our own server-to-client communication. By using commands, we can implement our own client-to-server communication. Please bear with me, it will all make sense by the end. I'll give you an example of this before explaining how it works. I've made a quick spigot plugin that adds an item called the Wand of Sparking. If I right-click on this item, it will send out a little spark of fire, which consumes the mana. Let's make this as complicated, but also as cool as possible. First things first, I want to be able to fire this one of sparking when I'm not holding it, specifically with the use of keybinds. I will first start off with a server-side implementation. Instead of having the one of sparking trigger in a right-click event, I will move it to a command like so. So now if I run the command slash wand, it will shoot out the one of sparking like before. I will now add some extra code so that it will trigger if I have the item in my inventory and not just in my hand. There we go! Now I can fire the wand just by having it in my inventory. Let's make a fabric mod so we can add some client to server logic. I will make a custom keybind that when pressed, sends the command to the server like so. Heading back into Minecraft, I go into my options and change the keybind. Now if I press it, the wand fires just like that. That is the very basic client to server logic done. I want to make this mana bar look cooler though. I will make a custom GUI like so. It's just a simple bar that will represent my mana. Let's hook it up to the server. This requires a lot more code and I promise I'll explain it when it's done. It looks like this. Again, all will be explained when I'm done. Now my mana bar code, I want to remove the action bar logic and replace it with this code like so. Now back into the mod, I want to make a mixin. If you didn't know, mixins are easy ways to modify Minecraft's base code. I will mix into the chat message with Steve code and add this to it. Then I'll make a new class called handle data that will handle the data. It looks like this. Now I will hook up the GUI code to it. And just like that, we have our mana bar. It reacts to the server side value and everything. I know that was a lot of code and nonsense I just threw into your face. So let's go over this again, but slowly. For client to server, commands are used as it's an easy way to send data to the server without anybody else being able to see it. We just tell the client to run the command when the keybind is pressed. Client to server is very straightforward, but server to client isn't. Let's start with the server aspect of this. We send a chat message to the player that starts with this random string of characters. This is our key, a value unique to our plugin. It lets the mod know it's receiving data. Next, we send an underscore. Underscores are used as our split characters. When the client sees this, it knows to separate different chunks of data. Then we send the rest of the data. This will make a lot more sense when I show the client side code. Here is the mix in. It first checks if the message starts with a specified string from earlier. If it does, it splits the data using the underscores and then passes it to the handle data class. The class then checks which type of data it is. From there, it will decode the data using the relevant code. To finally make sense of all of this, Let's follow the chain of data as it goes from the server to the client. We send this string from the server. The mixin reads the chat message, and it sees that it starts with our key from earlier. So then we pass the data into handle data. It sees a 1. This tells the class that the type of data it is getting is the mana bar information. From there, the class decodes the rest of the data. The rest of the message includes a 20 and then a 16. The 20 is our maximum mana, and the 16 is our current mana, and so the handle data class interprets it as so. After all is said and done, the mixin stops the chat message from being added to our chat history. I hope that made sense. To summarize, we use chat messages and commands to allow communication between the client and server. This method isn't perfect, but it is super simple. Then we cover some drawbacks or issues that you might be thinking of. Can't any player just send data? No, as any chat message they send will start with their username centered by angle brackets. Can't the client send any command they like? No, all commands are checked for legitimacy before their logic is executed. Is this efficient? I'll be honest, I have no idea, but I haven't had any issues with it, 
and it likely is, seeing as it's just sending strings back and forth. How would the client send specific data? By adding command arguments. Now for some drawbacks. Underscores can be tricky, and I've actually had an issue with this in the past. If you're watching this 10, that's what this bug is about. For a plugin, I was tasked with making a player silent. I did this by sending the player's name followed by a 1 for silent, or a 0 for not silent. If you've been paying attention, you may realize a problem. Player names can have underscores. This leads to invalid data splitting, causing a disconnect. This can be solved in two different ways. One of them is to send the player's UUID instead of their name, and the other is to replace the underscores with a different character, and then back on the client we set it back to underscores. Last thing, you may notice how this bar is here, or how the player can use keybinds on other servers. Players without the mod also get their chat flooded. This is fixed by disabling the mod by default, and only enabling it once the mod receives a specific enable message. Here's how I implement this. Instead of looping over all players and sending the mana information, I only do this for players in this list. When a client joins, I send the data with type 0. When the client receives this, it wakes up and responds with a command, telling the server that the mod is present. Then, the plugin adds the player to the list so it can receive data again. I really hope you found this useful or informative. The source code is linked in the description if you would like to take a look. If you have any questions or clarifications, please comment them down below. Take care.